Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Well, in our previous video, we covered the Royal Saturn Silver Seiko made Type R Electric. And in that video, I alluded to the fact that I had put some sound insulation in the machine. Had a question from one of you viewers about how do you do that? Luckily, I did shoot some video footage about how I did that. So let's cut to how do you put sound insulation and a Royal Saturn. Keeping in mind, there's more than one way to do this. This is just the way that I figured out. So this is the Royal Saturn. This is a silver Seiko made electric Type R portable typewriter that is uh, very similar mechanically to the Royal Mercury, but it's electric powered. And it is in this pretty robin's egg blue shell, plastic shell, but I'd like to add some sound insulation to it. For the bottom sound insulation underneath the chassis, I've cut out a cereal box cardboard template and I'm using quarter inch thick dense craft foam as sound insulation. And here is the cut insulation seated in the base. Now there is a gap along the side walls here and I think I'm gonna fill that in with some different kind of foam. So I have this one inch thick polyurethane foam. I'm gonna try cutting some blocks and add them to the little spaces along here to fill it up nicely. You notice I've given room for the vent. It seats down on those posts right there. And just to test and verify that the machine works, Looks like everything works good. In the back of the machine, between the back panel and the rear of the bottom body shell, there's a little gap in there and I've cut some strips. And uh, I'm gonna put these right in here to add a little bit more sound insulation. And I've already fit checked it and this will not interfere with the top body shell seating in here, but it just adds a little bit more sound insulation. And it looks like if I want to, I could probably cut another little piece and add it right in here as well, where the power cord is. And there we go. We have this extra piece of insulation right in the gap underneath the power cord. Fits real nicely. So a lot of the hollow empty spaces around the chassis on both sides, I've used this one inch thick polyurethane foam that I got from the craft store, right along the right side and along the left side. Keeping in mind that I finally decided around the motor and motor pulley, especially right in here, I didn't use the polyurethane foam. Instead, I'm using this thin adhesive craft foam these individual pieces stick in here quite nicely. But back here, I've carved out the polyurethane right around the uh, primary motor pulley and back in here as well. So I think it's a pretty good way to put in the insulation. Well, so the gap in between the upper body shell, the back of it, and the chassis is too narrow for the thicker foam. So what I have is this black adhesive craft foam. So two millimeters thick. I'm gonna line it on the inside of there. And also underneath this panel, close to where the type R linkages are, I'm gonna put some of that there as well. Well, okay, so to hold these blocks of foam in, some of them are wedged in tightly, but others aren't. I'm gonna use this double-sided scotch tape uh, just to hold them in. I think this is easier to use than that thick 
white foamy tape, which I think is a little too thick. So the chassis itself, as you can see, is rather small, and it's very small, in fact. In fact, the chassis as it is right here is about the same size as the manual Royal Mercury. This is probably the smallest electric-powered typewriter chassis that I know of. So very impressive as far as how Silver Seca was able to fit in the electric power to this. So here is the drive motor pulley, the flywheel for the drive spindle and it is a flat belt so it should be easier to find a replacement for than those v-belts or notched v-belts toothed v-belts that a lot of other electric typewriters use and then the underneath side of the ribbon cover i've also applied the thin adhesive craft foam in pieces to try to form itself to the shape of the inside and try to fill up as much of the area as I can. I did leave this label space open just so I could leave it there for reference, but I did try to put the foam as many places as I could under here, and it seems like it's doing a pretty good job. Okay, to fit the top body shell in place, I'm going to put the carriage into shift lock mode, move the carriage all the way over to the left quite a ways, and then I'm going to start the body shell from the left side underneath the carriage. And then you'll have to slightly lift the chassis up so that it goes underneath there. And then you're going to want to get the chassis lined up. And all these little plastic brackets, little clips along here, you have to kind of reattach, including three of them in the front here. And you may have to lift the rear of the chassis slightly to get the front bezel to clip into place like that and to have the trim along the side sit down evenly all the way. Make a good examination along both sides, front and back, that the top shell is seated properly on the bottom shell, and then you can make sure the carriage moves smoothly. Unshift it. Looks good. So after I completed the sound insulation project, I did take the opportunity to operate the chassis and type some test typings with the bare chassis out of the body shell. Yes, it is noticeably louder outside the body shell. The sound insulation definitely does a good job of it. So the materials I'm using are fairly easy to acquire, at least here in the United States at craft stores like Hobby Lobby. I bought the quarter inch thick dense craft foam. I bought the thinner, what is it, two mil three millimeter uh, adhesive craft foam and some of that inch thick polyurethane foam, some double sided tape, pretty simple scissors, an X-Acto knife if you need it. And it does really add some value to your typewriter because it makes it quite a bit more pleasant to use. Especially if you like to write late at night in your house and you don't want to make all the rattling noises that typewriters often make. This typewriter now, I can type at night with it, and it is surprisingly quiet. Well, of course, all of this is for the purpose of, yes, enjoying our typewriters, creating with them, and so as always, I'll leave you with, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.